Hi everybody and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you're new, I'm Corey. Welcome to my channel. If you're returning, thank you as always for your tremendous support. Today's video is a compilation of all sorts of Christmas and July inspiration. I hope that you enjoy it. So let's go ahead and get right on into the crafting. DIY number one. So this is my inspiration picture for my next project. It's inspiration only, it's not gonna be exact, but I've got a couple of these fun frames from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna be using one of these wood pieces from the wood pile from the Hobby Lobby. I think there were six in that pack and I wanna say it was like $2.99. Um, so I am prepping my frames, I'm pulling all of the little tabs out. Um, and then I'm going to seal the glass into the frames using my Starbond glue and accelerator. And so you just use a little dab. It's, they say like a little dot every inch is all that you need. And this stuff really worked well, especially with the accelerator. I was impressed. Of course, I should have taken the cap off of the accelerator first. <laughs> find a way or make a way. But I sprayed that on the other surface, set down my glass, and then just made sure that it was where it needed to be. And yeah, that was good to go. So I did the same thing on the other side. And now I'm going to be taking my little wood piece. And th this has curved edges on it, and I want the edges to be square. So I am just slicing off the ends so that I have uh, square edges and the reason for that and then I went ahead obviously and cleaned it up with my sanding block but the reason for that is I'm tucking it into these frames and I want it to sit as flush and square as possible so I'm going to go ahead and use my Starbond crazy glue again use my accelerator got that set in there and then did you see how quick that set up you guys it's like in there so I'm adding some to the other end and I'm going to use my accelerator on the other side and attach that as well. Once I had that all set, I'm going to grab a bunch of the large popsicle sticks, um, large craft sticks, if you will, and I'm gonna go ahead and create a roof with these. So using my crazy glue again, I'm applying the, the um, accelerator to the opposite piece so wherever you put the glue that's not where you want to put the accelerator so you spray the accelerator on the thing that you're attaching it to if that makes sense so the glue goes on one part that you're connecting and then the accelerator goes on the other part you're connecting and then when you put them together it just creates that bond almost instantly so as I go up the little roof, I'm overlapping my craft sticks to make it look a little bit like shingles. So I did the one side and then I came back in and I did the other side. And I was applying glue to the edge where I knew it was gonna connect with the frame. So now I'm coming in and I'm taping the glass and uh, I'm doing it this way because I, I just want to make sure I don't get paint on it. I could have painted it beforehand, but I figured I wanted to paint the entire thing. So I just went ahead and taped off the glass and did it all at once. This is my elephant chalk paint by Waverly, and I'm giving the entire um, lantern one good coat of elephant. That was really all it needed. It didn't need more than a single coat. So it worked out real well. So now I have these um, shower curtain rings from the Dollar Tree and then these picks that I'd picked up. They were $1.49 at the Hobby Lobby and I've had them in my stash for a few years. I'm sure I got them on sale. So they were probably 40% off. So $1.50 for these plus 40% off. Speak in my language. So I trimmed off the ends of these and I am just going to um, situate them at the top of the roof and use some hot glue to secure those on either side. And then I'm going to go ahead and take one of the shower curtain rings and I'm going to give that a coat of the elephant chalk paint as well. And as I was doing this, I felt like it was looking a little bit flat. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to get out my brushed metal um, folk art chalk paint. So 
I went ahead and grabbed that and I'm using a little bit of a dry brush technique on the shower curtain ring. And so just giving it a little bit more interest. Now, once that's all dry, I'm gonna tuck it in between my little floral picks and secure that down with hot glue as well. And that's just gonna create the top of our lantern there. So once that was all good to go, I decided to come back in with some more of that brushed metal paint. And it's, it's basically a gold tone. It's called brushed metal for whatever reason, but it's just a really pretty metallic gold. And I, I really like it a lot actually. So I am just again, very lightly streaking that on to add some detail and some dimension to the project. Hopefully that makes sense. And that was pretty much it, you guys. I am loving this too. I hope you love it as much as I do. DIY number two. So for this project, I have an, a couple of ornaments from the Dollar Tree, a pair of socks from the Dollar Tree, an old ornament from my stash, and some other items from the Dollar Tree that are left over from other projects. I'm taking one of those socks and I just cut off the little foot part of it, and I'm going to drop some of these glass beads that I picked up from the Dollar Tree in the bottom to weight it down. And then I was thinking, because I'm out of fiber fill again, <laughs> If you have fiber fill, this is where you'd want to use it. But I thought I'd use some of this packing material. It was just too stiff. So I pulled it out of there and decided to shred it. And then I put it back in and it worked much better. A little bit messy, but it did the job. Once I had that all filled, I went ahead and sealed up the top. I just used a little twist tie, twisted that around there, made sure that it was good to go. So now I'm looking at the other part of that sock, trying to figure out if I can use that for what I'm doing or if I need something else. It's not quite long enough. So I'm like, you know what? I think I've got another sock in my stash. So I went back and grabbed another Dollar Tree sock. This is left over from another project. So it's the, it's the singleton sock. And I am just pulling it down over and figuring out how it will fit. So I went ahead and shredded up some more of that packing material and stuffed the little sock, which is going to be our hat, if you hadn't already figured that out. And once I had that good to go, I put it back down over the little body. So I'm just making sure it's all good. And now I'm gonna take this little gold ornament from the Dollar Tree and I cut off the little knobby thing and I'm gonna tuck it in under the hat and glue it down. Just using a little bit of hot glue there. And then I'm also going to bring my hot glue in and I'm going to use that around the sides of the little nose and make sure that the hat is uh, gonna stay in place where I want it there. And then I went ahead and also sealed around the edge so that the hat was nice and secure. So now I'm taking this leftover dust mop um, thing from the Dollar Tree. Obviously this has already been cut once before. I had it, used it for another project and I'm just measuring where I wanna cut it for this project. And I'll just tell you, this, this stuff sheds a lot. I ended up with it all over my shirt. So forgive my appearance later when you see little white things all over me. But um, once I had it cut down to size, I went ahead and glued it down with my hot glue and just made sure that was all nice and secure. So now I'm cutting the little hanger off of this cute little ornament that I had picked up last year. I thought it was super cute and I know they're little elf legs, but they are going to be our gnome's legs. And I'm just using a generous amount of hot glue, setting his little bum right down in there and he's got legs. So now I'm using some leftover yarn and this is that chenille yarn. Again, something else that kind of has a lot of fuzz to it, but I wanted a nice fluffy little pom-pom. So I wrapped it around my fingers as many times as I could 
I'm tying off the center with a piece of sturdy twine, making sure that's nice and tight. I'll trim off the excess, and then I'm gonna cut all of the loops on here and create a pom-pom. And because it's crazy yarn, I just went ahead and gave it a haircut and trimmed it up until it was looking like a pom-pom should. And then I used some hot glue to secure that at the tip of his little hat. So I decided that I hadn't cut down the beard enough. I had just sent a quick picture to my sister and she was laughing and said that he looked like a snowball. <laughs> so I decided I was going to remove a little bit more of his beard because I could definitely see what she was saying. So here he is and he definitely needs some arms. He looks a little funny without arms here. So I took that leftover piece of sock that I couldn't use before and I am going to cut out the be mine so that I have just that solid piece and then I'll also cut the stripes off of it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the stripe part off and set that aside and now I'm going to cut this in half so I'm just folding it in half cutting it down the middle so I make sure that my both sides are even and then I am going to create little arms by folding it inside out I'm going to use my hot glue again and I'm going to create a little seam all the way down the length of it and kind of curving it at the end because it's going to be like little mittens and I thought it was so great that I had that white band at the end there so that I could do that. So I did that to both of them and once they were dry or cool, I should say, I went ahead and turned them right side out. And so I have my little arms. I'm just using a paint brush to help kind of push the um, uh, sock fabric right side out. Um, now I'm using a little bit more of that packing material. I just pulled a strip of it off because I just wanted to, the arms to have a little bit of structure to them. So you could use fiber fill if you want for this as well. So, but it doesn't need a whole lot, just enough to give it a little bit of structure. Like I said, so it doesn't just flop. Sealed that up with some hot glue and now I've got my little arms. I'm just going to figure out where I'm gonna place them on either side of him and you guessed it, more hot glue. So sealing his arms to the sides of his body so that his little hands meet in the front. I love him so much. He makes me happy. And then I'm taking this little Christmas tree ornament from my stash and I am just going to have him hold the ornament. So again, just a little bit of hot glue on each of his little mittened hands and then he'll be all good to go with his little Christmas tree but I love him so much and I hope you love him too. DIY number three. For this project, I have a mason jar. I've got some Christmas trees from the Dollar Tree. I'm showing you more of my little jingle bells and then some fake snow and my little star ornaments also from the Dollar Tree. So I am just taking the larger of these two little Christmas trees and making sure that it's going to fit inside my mason jar. I'm gonna glue my tree to the inside of the lid. And as you can see, I'm working with this all upside down. I'm gonna take one of my little stars and I am pulling off the little holder thingy or the little hanger part so that it's just the star. And I'm gonna use some hot glue and secure that to the top of my little tree. And then I'm going to be taking my little jingle bells. I'm gonna decorate the tree with some of the jingle bells. So I know it's really hard to see here on the the, uh, the video but I'm actually hanging the little bells on the little bristles of the tree so there's like a little hanger place I guess you could say for the jingle bells and I'm using that and tucking it in on the little bristles and then I'm coming in with some hot glue hopefully you can see a little bit better there what I'm doing but then coming in with a little bit of hot glue just to make sure that it stays put on the little bristle. So you can see there how I just kind of slid it right onto the bristle and then I glued it down. And so once I had that all done, I'm taking some of my artificial snow and I'm pouring it into the glass portion of my mason jar, right? So the jar itself, I'm just gonna flip my tree upside down. That's why I needed to glue it to the inside of the lid, right? And then secure that, turn it right side up and shake all my snow down. So cute.
DIY number four. So I have a bunch of uh, these ornaments from the Dollar Tree that I picked up last year. I've got three different sizes and I'm gonna be using one of each. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the little nubby thing that holds the ornament hanger if you will. And I'm using my hot glue. I showed you I have a little wood, teeny wood round that's out of my stash from a set of wood pieces that I'd gotten from the Dollar Tree. And just using hot glue to secure the largest ball to the wood round, the next uh, size ball to the large one, and then the smallest one is going to go on top. You're probably already guessing what it is that I'm making here, but I'm using my um, home decor Adam Adirondack white chalk paint to give that a really good coat of paint. And now I am using my green cotton yarn. This is also from the Dollar Tree. And I cut off about nine strands of uh, yarn not about it was was nine strands so I tied a knot in that I went ahead and braided it and now I am fraying the ends of the yarn I had tied it off on both ends and just creating a little tiny scarf here so once I had that all frayed I trimmed off both ends and there is our cute little scarf just a very simple braid so nothing fancy there so now I have this red felt that I've gotten from Arteza. It's adhesive felt. And I had just grabbed one of my bottles of paint that was about the right size for the circle that I wanted to cut. Used that as a pattern, cut it out. Now I'm looking to create um, the next part of the little hat that I'm making. So I've got the brim was that large circle. And now I am making the top part of the hat. And I feel like somebody at some point shared with me what that is called. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, so at any rate, I am going to go ahead and apply that. And then I am going to flip it over and get an approximate size for the top of the hat to close it off with another piece of felt. So this is a very basic, very simple way of doing this. As you can see, I'm pulling off the backing of, from the felt to stick that on there. And then I went into my stash of all my little mini jingle bells and I pulled out a few green ones. You'll be seeing me using these jingle bells on another project later on, but just using some hot glue to add a few little jingle bells to our snowman's hat um, for a little bit of interest. So now I have from my stash again, this is also from the Dollar Tree. They are little twig-like things. I don't know. It's a, it's a pick of twigs with uh little snowflakes all over it so I am uh, using my craft knife here to just um, slice some slits in the hat so that it will conform to his little head a little bit more and then I peeled away some of that backing but not all of it because I don't want stuff to get stuck up underneath his hat so just enough to get it to stick to his little head and now applying his arms with hot glue and just adding a little bit more hot glue so that it's nice and secure and then i have some more fake snow from the dollar tree in my stash and i'm sorry i'm a little off camera here but i'm just sprinkling some of that into the hot glue to camouflage the hot glue with this a little bit of extra snow and you'll be seeing me use that fake snow in another project a little bit later as well so now just taking his little scarf and tying it around his neck and he's already so cute i love snowmen what is your favorite thing to decorate with during the winter season? Mine is snowmen. I absolutely love snowmen. So I'm just using my Arteza acrylic paint markers to create his little face and his buttons. I'm doing his nose in the orange acrylic paint marker. And that's it. He is so sweet. I love him and I hope you love him too. DIY number five. So I have this little wood cut out. This one is actually from the um, Michaels and it was 99 cents. And then I think it was 20% off. 
I'm not sure. My sister picked it up for me last year and I'm using that brushed metal again and then my platinum. These are both plaid products and uh, going to use my platinum on the bottom half. I saw something, I can't remember if it was Pinterest or Instagram or somewhere, but I saw something recently online that was an inspiration for this. I thought it was so pretty to have this two-toned with um, gold and silver. So I had done the bottom half with the silver and now I'm coming in on the top half and just feathering that in, in the middle um, to blend it with that gold. So once I had that all set, look how pretty this is. Now you could totally leave it just like this or you could add a little sparkle with some glitter if you wanted. You could do really so many different things with this, but I decided I was going to add some berry picks kind of behind the words. So I started to create a little bundle, if you will, and then I grabbed a little tie a greenery tie evergreen tie i think those come in a pack of 10 or 12 from the dollar tree again i've got a whole bunch of them left from last year and i was just fussing around with that and then i cut it into a few pieces and i finally got it to the way that i wanted it i, I was just struggling with getting it to where i wanted it but i finally got there so sometimes it just takes a little bit of of messing with it to get it to, um, to a point that looks pleasing to you. Um, so I had secured that with some hot glue and now I have some Dollar Tree ribbon also from last year that I am creating a bow with. It's just a regular shoe your, shoe your, <laughs> tie your shoelace bow. <laughs> It's late when I'm doing this voiceover, you guys. Sorry, I'm a little brain dead. Um, and uh, then I decided I wanted to create a little bit of a tail for it. So I am uh, securing that with some hot glue and I am just going to create some, not loops, but bumps, I guess. I don't know. It's not a wired ribbon, so I have to kind of help it <laughs> to do what I want it to do. And I am helping it with some hot glue, so. And then I'm going to go ahead and secure down my bow right there. And so both sides of this is, are going to be very pretty, right? I'm going to trim off my little ends. And then I did just seal up the ends with a little smidge of hot glue because they do like to fray and unravel this type of ribbon. So there you have it. I love this. I hope you do too. DIY number six. So I've got a little wooden ornament that I think came from Michael's. It was in a pack of a bunch of them. I have it left over in my stash from last year. I'm gonna give it a good coat of my Adirondack white chalk paint by Home Decor. It is a plaid product. And uh, once I have that all done, you can also see I've got my little Cricut Joy out and I've got my Joy mat and some scrap vinyl from an old project. So while my little ornament base is drying, I'm just working on the design and you can see I'm just doing it right on my phone. It's very simple and setting up what I want to cut out on my little joy. So then I went ahead and I got my vinyl ready. I'm just kind of lining it up to see where I want to cut it. I love the little grid on the back of the vinyl. It helps you cut straight lines. It's perfect. So once I had it all cut out, I went ahead and got my mat put away and then I weeded out my vinyl. And if you don't have a vinyl cutter, there are so many things that you can do with this. You could print out images from your computer, you could do rub-on transfers, you could paint something really pretty. The, you know, the sky is the limit. You do not need to feel like you have to have a vinyl cutter in order to do this. There are lots of lots of options for you. So once I had it all cut out and weeded, I went ahead and used my transfer tape to get the vinyl ready to put onto my project. Just burnished it real quick. And then I'm gonna apply it to my little base. And I had uh, measured my little round shape that, on my vinyl to be small enough so that it would fit inside the perimeter. So it's got like a nice white border on it. And then our hope shines through in white. So loving this. So then I'm thinking about what I wanna do with it next. 
So while I'm thinking about how I want to embellish it, I decided I'd go ahead and put a little hanger on it. So I'm using my twine again. And I had used my little pokey tool. There wasn't actually a hole in the top of this originally. Uh, er, yeah, originally. Um, so I'm coming back with my pokey tool. I hadn't shown you that before. I must have edited it out. Sorry about that. But um, I just made the hole a little bit wider. Um, you just want to be careful because you can split the wood really easily. Um, to be safe, I probably should have used my little drill bit, but it all worked out. So then I'm just tying a knot at the base where it attaches. And now I'm going to use one of these Dollar Tree greenery ties again. And I'm going to cut it down in a couple of different pieces and try and figure out how I want to arrange it on here. Y'all know how much I love cutting down my picks. Um, and then I learned to do this, and I cannot remember where I learned this. Um, there was another person on YouTube who used to do this, or I saw do this, and when you give it a little, a little haircut, it um, makes it look a little bit more real and a little fuller, if you will. So um, I just I decided to cut those down a little bit more and cleaning up my mess. <laughs> and then I went ahead and attached the little tips with the hot glue where I wanted them. I find the smaller pieces tend to be easier to work with and to place where I want them, depending on the project. Every once in a while, I will leave a pick hole, but it's rare. <laughs> I'm usually pulling them apart. So I am just cutting a couple of little pieces from this Dollar Tree berry pick. It's got little glimmery, icy crystals on it as well. And just gonna use two little pieces that I'm gonna secure as well with some more hot glue, just to uh, give it some little pretty berries there. And then I know that I want something else. I'm looking at it and I love these little berries and I love the greenery, but I'm just feeling like it needs a little bit something extra. So I give it a thought for a second. I'm like, I'm gonna grab that ribbon again. This is the same ribbon that I used on the Noel um, ornament. And I just tied a simple knot. So I cut it off maybe three or four inches, tied a simple knot. I'm adding a little bit of hot glue and I'm gonna secure it right above those um, greenery picks. And it's gonna serve as my little bow. How cute is that? And so simple, I love it. DIY number seven. So this is my inspiration for the next project. I thought that they were really cool looking. And so I've got a bunch of items from the Dollar Tree, including a 3D wreath form. So I'm putting the wreath form together. If you see that little pinwheel kind of thing on my craft table there, it's a little metal thing. And I was kind of off screen a little bit there, but you essentially bend those little feet over each of the wires on the form hopefully that makes sense but there is a little instruction card that comes with it that shows you what to do so i went ahead and started placing these giant ornaments inside to get an idea and of how it would look and they the yeah the form just was still a little too wide to grab everything so hopefully that makes sense. Um, so I figured I'd come in with the lights and I was going to try to create an extra barrier rather than going up the sides of the wreath form. Now, as I was doing all of this, I was wishing that I had used a second um, wreath form. So if you have two of these 3D wreath forms, if you add a second one and offset it, I think that probably would work really, really well for this project if you decide you want to attempt this. Because um, you can see, I'm just, I'm on the struggle bus with this, you guys. So I ultimately, I completely took it apart and I decided I was going to come in and use wire to close up some of my edges. So I'm just going to go around and around with the wire and then ultimately I'll come back in with the lights. So I'm coming this way with the wire and then I'll go the opposite direction with the lights in between the wreath form 
pieces to help close the gaps even a little bit more. So it's better, right? I've got the ornaments back in here again and I'm doing okay, but there are still some areas where they are going to escape on me if I don't close it a little bit further. So here you can see I am grabbing the lights and getting them started and I'm kind of wrapping them around each wire and bringing it up through. So this is going to do a couple of things. It's going to close that gap that I was talking about, but it's also going to help prevent the wires from sliding up and down the wreath form because it's going to help keep them where they need to be. Hopefully that makes sense. And each of these Dollar Tree string lights was long enough to make one round around the wreath form. And I believe this is the larger. They have two different size um, 3D wreath forms. This is the larger of the two, I think. I'm going to double check that. And I'm going to leave a note in my description box because now I can't remember. I'm, I might be actually using the smaller one. I really can't remember. Isn't that terrible? I know I had both and now I can't remember which one I used. But um, I went ahead and attached all of the lights. And now if you used a second um, wreath form and offset it here, then you wouldn't need to use the wire, I don't think. And you also would be able to then run your lights right along the wreath form. So it would be a much cleaner look, I think. So now I'm taking one of those gold baskets from the Dollar Tree, gold wire basket, and I'm just going to attach it to the wreath form. This is going to be the little top of our ornament. And I am sorry if you can hear Sammy in the background. You probably heard his little uh, collar rattling before, and now he's up scratching on Elena's bedroom door because he wants in where she is and woofing. So apologies if you hear him. But, um, but this is some of my Kirkland's ribbon from Costco. I decided I was going to try to weave it through here, and then I did not like the way that was looking. So I took it apart, and now I'm just going to use hot glue to apply it to the outside. And I'm just going to wrap that around all the way up to the top. Now, I went ahead, and I was finding it was hard to work with the ribbon on the roll, on the spool. So I went ahead and measured off approximately how much I would need and cut that off. And then I was able to work with it a little bit easier. So that was going to allow me to, to, to work a little easier with the hot glue and getting it applied. Now, if you have not heard me talk about the Costco ribbon before, if you have a Costco near you, you definitely want to be on the lookout for their ribbon as we start heading towards fall. It is, I believe, 50 yards for like $7. It's amazing. And it's, they have a whole bunch of different designs and it's really nice quality, really the best deal that I have ever found as far as ribbon goes. So... I think this turned out super cute, and I hope you did too. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you're enjoying the projects so far. I really do appreciate every single one of you. If you have not already subscribed, if you don't know who I am, I'm Corey. Welcome to my channel. I am thrilled to have the opportunity to share all kinds of DIYs with you all crafts, usually on a budget, lots of Dollar Tree, trash to treasure, thrift flips, things of that sort. So a little bit of everything. And I hope that you will subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell so that you get notified every time I upload a new video. My subscribers mean the world to me. You all are so super special and I appreciate you so much. So without further ado, let's get right back to the projects. DIY number eight. So this is my inspiration. This is something I saw on Etsy and I am starting out with some Dollar Tree ribbon, but also this was $1.99 at Michael's. I got it after the season. So I don't remember if it was 40% off or 70% off, but I tend to always make sure I get things on sale, but I'm using my Adirondack white home decor chalk paint and I am pouring some of this in here. Now I did think about using a brush and doing it just because I'm like, I can be a little cheap, you guys. And I don't like to waste paint and whatever. So I thought about doing a brush, but honestly, 
excuse me, it's a lot easier if you can just pour the paint in there. It does take some extra paint. Um, I know you could probably water it down and make it go a little further, but I, this is just the way I did it. Then I let it drain, and this is where I forgot to turn my camera back on after it was ready to work with. So this is the finished piece. Well, all I did was I came back in with my Arteza acrylic paint marker. I wrote the word Noel. You could use a Sharpie for that, whatever you'd like to do. You might actually get a cleaner line with a Sharpie because my little point was a little jagged. And then I added my little bow with my Dollar Tree ribbon. Let me know what you think. DIY number nine. So for this project, I have the base from a Dollar Tree paper towel holder and then a whole bunch of these um, evergreen ties that I've had in my stash from last Christmas season. And I'm just going to fold them all in half to get the center point and then I'm cutting them with my wire cutters. I am just going to then take them and at the halfway point bend them around the paper towel holder here and give them a good twist so they're on secure and I am just going to do this all the way around the paper towel holder and you can see we're actually building a really easy little evergreen wreath and you can make this as full or as sparse as you choose. I chose to make this um, relatively full. And so every time I added one of these, I just slid it up behind the, the one in front of it and just made sure that they were all on there nice and secure. So now I have a bunch of these teeny little ornaments from the Dollar Tree as well. And I am just going to identify where I want to place them. I have silver in a couple of different styles. So like glittery and shiny and matte and then gold that was glittery and my red as well. So once I have them placed around where I want them, I'm just kind of trying to figure out how I want to attach them. And I decided against top glue so I pulled out my floral wire and I started to attach them through the part of the ornament that you use to hang them normally and that was working fine and you'll see I, I did that a few times but then I just felt like they were sticking out too far off of the wreath and I was trying to twist it get it tighter in there and eventually and then I was just clipping off of the wire there um, but after a little bit of doing that, I finally decided that I wanted to try doing it without the little hanger. So you can see here, I'm about to pull that off. I'm like, you know what? Let me try and attach it directly to the bulb. And it does have a little lip on there, which worked perfectly so that the wire doesn't slide off. So I just wrapped the wire around the little neck of the bulb itself and then attached it to the wreath. And that just gave me, um, the fit was a little bit more snug and that made me a little bit happier. <laughs> but here it is with all my little bulbs on there. And then I knew I wanted to um, put a ribbon on here, like a really pretty bow. So I pulled out my Kirkland ribbon. You guys have probably heard me talk about this before. I understand from one of my sweet subscribers that places like Sam's Club and BJ's also carry this type of ribbon. So I'm Obviously, it's going to be their own brands, but definitely check out your wholesale clubs if you have one near you, because I will tell you this 50 yard roll of ribbon was $6.99 at Costco, and I love it. I've got every, every single year, I go back and get more of their ribbon, and they usually have new styles and um, textures and prints and just so pretty. I love it so much, and it's such a great price. So I created my ribbon, I'm just tying it on here, and then I created a little loop with some of the excess ribbon. So I have a hanger. And there it is, just fluffing up my ribbon. And now this is a wreath that I had made with a little wreath hanger back in spring, and I'm gonna use that for my wreath to be putting on my tiered tray in just a little bit. DIY number 10. So for this project, I have my Arteza little wood rounds, some Dollar Tree ribbons, some Dollar Tree tags, and some wooden beads with some twine. And I'm gonna be using my white Arteza paint marker this time. 
So I'm just going to pull out six of these little rounds and I am going to get them all set with my little tags. Now the tags are a little bit larger than the rounds. So what I ended up doing was, um, well, I took off all of the little tag holders, if you will. And now I'm just using something that is about the size of the circle that I want. And I'm cutting my tags out in circular shapes that are going to fit on my little um, wood rounds. I'm just showing you this massive container of school glue. <laughs> I'm just making sure that I get it to all of the edges before I apply it to my little wood rounds. And you could probably use Mod Podge. I considered it and then I decided I was going to save my Mod Podge and just use regular school glue. <clears throat> and now I am poking the little hole for my hanger because my black cardstock, for lack of a better term, my tags, they're covering up the little hanger holes in the wood. So I'm poking it from the backside so I know where the hole is, and then I'm actually opening up that hole from the front to just make it cleaner. So now I'm flipping my little point around on my paint marker. So if you haven't used Arteza paint markers before, they have a double-ended tip and you can pull the tip out and flip it over. One side is a regular blunt tip and then the other side has a point on it. Now I've made the mistake of trying to put the lid back on with the point side exposed and it doesn't work that way. You have to flip the tip back inside or it gets smooshed. So my tip isn't quite as um, sharp as it used to be and I have more tips somewhere and I just I've got to find them in my stash. It's time to clean out the craft room again, if you can believe it. Um, but I'm essentially starting in the middle with all of these so that I can do my best to center them without having to measure anything. And I'm just writing my words on each of my little ornaments. Once I had all my words written out, I am cutting out or or trim, what would you call this? I am cutting lengths of twine. There we go. And uh, these are uh, probably 14 to 16 inches long, if I had to guess. I probably made them longer than they needed to be, but I wanted to make sure I had enough room for everything I wanted to do. And I probably could have trimmed them later on, and I, I didn't, but you do what makes your heart happy. Um, so I had flipped just one end of the twine through the wood round ornament, added on those three wooden beads through both strands. So here you can see me doing it again. I'm adding the beads onto both strands together, three beads, and then I am tying off at the top. I do come back in a little bit later and tie off at the tops of the beads as well, but for right now I just left it like that. And you can put whatever you want on these. It doesn't even have to be words. They could be pictures. They could You could print things off of your printer, like little pretty images. If you have fun little stickers, you could decorate. Again, the little kids could do this with you. So I'm coming in with my Dollar Tree ribbon, and I thought I was just going to do a regular um, shoelace bow at the top of each of these. And it just, it, it wasn't working because it wanted to turn sideways on me and I wanted it straight on the top of the little um, beads. I'm still playing with it because I'm determined, right? And I realize, you know, it's not going to work. So I took it off. I'm creating a little shoelace bow right there. And once I got it all situated and the way that I wanted it, I went ahead and trimmed off my ends and got it set to uh, to connect at the, bot at the base of the beads. So there I am. I'm going to dovetail my little ribbons. And I saw this, I think it was on Pinterest, I saw something like this. So that was where I got my inspiration for this. I don't think I have a picture to, to share for this one though. But um, I am loving these little ornaments. So once I had that all set, I went ahead and did two more ribbons in the red. And then I also did three ribbons in the green. Oh, and here you can see I'm just tying off my little knots at the top of the beads. And that's also going to give my little ribbons something to adhere to. So it's going to be easier to fasten them when I'm ready to do that. And I'd gotten a little ahead of myself in what I was telling you. So here I'm going back and I am doing the, the ribbons. So I've got six ornaments, three red, and then I'll do three green. And you can see I'm just kind of eyeballing the length of the ribbons. 
<clears throat> so once I had them all done, dovetailed all of the ends, you can see them all ready to go. And then I'm just gonna come in with my hot glue and I'm gonna put a little dab of glue on the back of the bow and attach it to that knot that's at the top of the wooden beads. And that's it, such a simple, fun, really cute project. I just absolutely adore these. I could see making even more of them with all different kinds of things on them, but here they are all done. DIY number 11. So I have one of these little, I think it's actually a decanter vase from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just getting an idea of how large I want to make my decal in a little bit. But for right now, I decided I was going to go ahead and give it a good coat of paint. I knew I was going to need to give it a second coat of paint. And I don't know if you have the same challenge as I do painting on glass. But when I go back in to give it my second coat of paint, it gets gloppy or it wants to pull the first layer up. It's just, I always find it to be a challenge. So I started to, um, I don't know why, but I decided I was going to start painting the inside of this a little bit. And as I was doing it, it occurred to me, well, what if I had just painted the inside of it to begin with? <laughs> Maybe it, I would have had a nice even surface on the outside. I, you know, I'm looking at it, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to try that. So I had another one in my stash. I went ahead and grabbed it and I decided I was going to paint the inside. And I actually liked the way this looked so much better. And you're going to understand a little bit more why in just a few minutes when you see the decal that I'm going to be putting on this. So I went ahead and I just made sure that the entire inside was covered. I did end up pouring a little bit of extra paint in there and let it swoosh around and then I set it upside down to dry. So now I've got my little Cricut Joy again and I am creating a label for this. It's something that was already designed in their little studio and then I'm going to go ahead and weed it out. And I am loving this little decal milk for Santa. So once I had it all set and I got it onto my transfer tape, I just went ahead and I was able to apply it right to my little now milk jug. And look at how sweet this is. And it actually looks like it has milk in it because I painted the inside of it. So the one that I painted exterior, I'll save that for another project in the future. And I'm sure that it will be used for something at some point. But look at how cute. So now I grabbed some of my Dollar Tree ribbon from my stash. This is all stuff that I had picked up last year. And I am just going to try and create a little bow around the neck of the bottle. So I decided I was just going to do a simple knot there, trimmed off the ends, and now I am flipping the ribbon around and around, just looping it over itself. This is a one-sided ribbon, so I needed to make sure that I was keeping the pattern on the outside. So I just flipped it around. Um, I made sure that I had it enough for five loops on either side. And then I notched it, you could see there. Wendy from White Sparrow Living makes the best bows and this is how she makes hers. So thank you, Wendy, for the tips. I love this. And so then I'm just gonna pull it all apart in different directions, having that notch there. And you saw that I attached it with some floral wire in the middle. Um, you could use a chenille stem, you know, whatever you have on hand to just secure that in the middle. But having those notches allows all the little loops to go in different directions. And then I just trimmed off my wire and I'm going to attach it with some hot glue right there to the knot that I had created on the neck of the bottle. And that's it. I think this is super sweet. Wait till you see here. There it is. Look how cute. I love this. I hope you like it too. DIY number 12. 
This is my inspiration. Not real expensive, but I thought they were kind of cute and I thought they'd be super easy to make. I'm using these little ties from the Dollar Tree and some leftover garland also from the Dollar Tree that I had. I pulled out one of these. It was a little sparse, so I thought I'd double it up. And then I pulled out another one. I don't know what the difference is there, but one was so much more lush and full. So I'm only going to need one. And you saw that I just twisted it around and I bent it and kind of twisted around itself to um, get it to hold together and now I'm just decorating it with this wired garland it's like a little tinsel garland because I thought it needed a little something other than just the greenery and this is such a simple fun easy project you could do this with the kids it is super quick and so at the top there once I got my garland all wrapped around and decorated I'm just twisting it around itself to fasten it and I am creating a little hanger for our little mini wreath ornament so then I decided I wanted to add a little bow, just like the inspiration. And I was trying out a bunch of Dollar Tree ribbons and I just wasn't happy with the way any of them were looking. That first one, although I loved the ribbon, it was getting lost. The second one, I was like, oh, that might be a contender. The third one, didn't like it at all. The silver one just didn't really speak to me. So I went back to this other one, but my wreath now with the garland is a little bit more blingy. And this ribbon that I'm trying is a little bit more rustic and I just didn't really care for the combination. So I tried the original one again. I, I was determined because I do really like that raffia, but it just, it was disappearing. So I finally went back to my stash, got a regular wired satin ribbon that I had and I figured, you know what? I thought it was gonna be a little too big, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a shot. I didn't like the way it was going to look with just a regular tiger shoelace bow. So I'm doing a loop bow. I just literally created a loop there with the ribbon. And then I'm going to cut another um, little bit of ribbon and tie that around for my tails. Now, I realized that I needed to really secure that middle section first because it was giving me a hard time when I was trying to adjust it. So I used a little bit of hot glue there. You saw me use in the middle just to kind of secure my loop together just adding a little bit more once that was cool I just came in with that piece of ribbon and tied it off in the middle so that you would have it actually look like a bow and it's got its little tails and then I just dovetailed the ends and once that was all done I was able to fluff it up and twist my little tails around the way I wanted them and it is looking so adorable and I just love this. I used a little bit of hot glue to secure the bow. If you're working with kids, you probably would want to use school glue or just make sure an adult does the hot glue. But I love it and I hope you do too. DIY number 13. So for this project, it's going to be super simple. I have a couple of mugs from the Dollar Tree. I have some vinyl from Cricut. This obviously is a red buffalo check. It also makes me think of plaid. And so I went into the Cricut studio on my phone app and I just punched in an A and an R. And I am going to be doing initial mugs. And I saw something like this on Pinterest and I thought it was the cutest idea. So I did two of each letter because I want to make the mugs have a front and a back. So no matter which way you hold the mug, you can see the letter. And so one is for Rich and the other is for Elena. So my fiance and my daughter are both going to be getting some mugs. And I just love the size of these mugs too. They are nice and big and fantastic. So once my cr little Cricut Joy had, uh, had cut out the decals, you can see here I'm just applying them with some transfer tape. And you can see I'm just using a little bottle of paint underneath my mug handle to help me keep it steady and where I want it. That is it. Such a simple and fun project. And you can personalize anything this way. Just love it. But let me know what you think. Here are my mugs all done, both of them. DIY number 14. 
So I have from my stash again these little cut out um, wooden stockings and I believe I actually had gotten these from Michael's and I have I think there are six of them there I must have used one last year and so this is what I had left but it was perfect for what I wanted to do use my Adirondack white chalk paint again as you could see and I am now just tracing out the letters for my words here now you'll notice that the little tips of the toes did not get the white paint i wasn't worried about it that was where i was holding on to them but i'm going to be covering that with red anyway so i just want to make sure i had a nice coat of white all over the area where my letters were going to be because i wanted those to show through in white so now i'm going in and filling in with my imperial red chalk paint i believe this is a wave or no i'm mistaken it's not waverly it's home decor they're both plaid products so um by the same company just a, a different line if you will but all chalk paint so you can use whatever red you have. You could use an acrylic paint. It doesn't have to be chalk paint. I'm just using what I have in my stash and what is going to um, give me the best coverage for what I'm trying to do. So once I have my red all taken care of, I am stringing these little stockings along with some of my green jingle bells and I'm just adding a jingle bell in between the holes and then also in between each stocking just to give it a little bit more um, pizzazz and make it a little bit more fun so there they are so cute and then I did go ahead and just add one more jingle bell to either end and then I just put a knot in it to make sure that everything was going to stay put so just a cute little jingle garland DIY number 15. So for this, I'm using some floral wire. And this is, again, super simple. I did not know how this was gonna turn out. I was a little concerned it was gonna to be too large in the end, but you know what, it was fun. And I've been wanting to do something with this wire for a while. And let me just say, this is from the Dollar Tree and it bends like butter. I really found this super easy to work with. It was not difficult on my fingers. Uh, it just, it, it was a pleasure, quite honestly. And I am just bending it back and forth and around and trying to get my letters. I'm using my cursive letters and um, yeah. And that's all that I did. And you can make any word you want. Again, you could do Noel, you could do Faith, you could do Santa, you could do snowflake I mean any word that you want you can manipulate this wire to create what it is that you want welcome it doesn't even have to be a winter you know word it could be anything for your project and I kept having to count the number of laws I had because <laughs> I'm writing fa la 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 and when I say fa la 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 I'm like well how many laws is in fa la 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 I think it was four four or five Fa la 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 la. It's four. La 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 la. Yeah, four laws. <laughs> so I kept having to count out my laws. So once I had it all formed, I um, went ahead and just tried to tighten it up a little bit because I did feel like it was a little bit wide. And so just kind of tightening that up and then I'm gonna come in and, um, and just trim off my wire. Now I did consider having that wire just serve as a flourish around the top and that could have been super fun and you totally could do that. And looking at it again, I'm kind of wishing that I had, but ultimately I did decide that I was gonna cut that end off. And then there's my fa la 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 la, yeah, four laws, fa la 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 la. And uh, then I'm going to grab some twine after I finish showing it off. And I'm gonna connect some of that twine to the F, the top of the F, and then I'm gonna connect the other end to the last L and so it's just going to be a simple knot and this will be our hanger to put it on our tree a little bit later just getting it to the right length tying it off and then I'll trim my twine and all done how cute let me know what you think DIY number 16 
So I have some shower curtain rings and then a bunch of little fun garland, I guess you would call this. Um, so I took all the shower curtain rings and normally this is a pack of 12, I believe, but I only had 11 because I had used one of these for another project. And I decided I was gonna try and hook them all together first. Later, I realized I should have just left them apart. So do as I say, not as I do here. Um, I am using the opening here. I'm realizing I need it open again um, to my advantage. I'm hooking the little, I'm going to call this garland for lack of a better term, but hooking that to the one end. And then I am going to be wrapping it all the way around each of my little rings. So hopefully you understand what I'm what I'm saying. So I'm just I'm gonna end up wrapping every single ring so that they'll be completely covered with the garland. And I, at some point I do realize here that it's gonna be easier if I don't connect them from the start. There it is. So I set the rest of them aside. I'm using that opening with the ring to my advantage. And once I get it almost completely covered, I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to cut off um, the end to help me finish that up. But I'll close it off first. I don't know if I showed you closing it, but I closed the uh, shower curtain ring and then I wrapped it the rest of the way. So that's the first one. And I'm gonna set that aside. I'm gonna start on the second one. So I'm just gonna take that one off and this is what I'm gonna do in gold. So I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue to secure it at the edge. And you wanna make sure that you don't get it in the way of where the shower curtain um, ring comes together. It will lock itself together. So I'm leaving it open right now and just making sure that I'm not covering up the locking mechanism. So I'm gonna wrap that all the way around. And once I get all the way around with the whole thing covered, again, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to cut a tail for myself. I'm gonna hook this into the first one. So now they're linked. I'm gonna close it up and then I will go ahead and cover up the closure with the rest of that little trim, that tail that I had left. And that's what I'm gonna do for the rest of these. And I'm just gonna alternate the colors. So I have red, gold, and silver. I don't have any green. They didn't have any when I was looking for it at my Dollar Tree last year. So this is what I have to work with. But you can make as many of these or as few of these as you want. And I just thought it would be a really fun little thing to have on my tiered tray. And here we are with the final reveal.
Okay, everybody, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. You know I really appreciate you. Please leave a comment and let me know what was your favorite project and be sure to give me a big thumbs up. Those two things help YouTube to recognize me and helps my channel to grow. Thank you so much for your support. Until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.